Hi everyone, it's Polar's Lights and Signals, and tonight we are back with another Street Light video. Um, real quick, you might notice the setup changed uh, a little bit. Well, I took the light arm down off this wall here because I kind of wanted to try something a little different. Um, because uh, I like having the street light at this angle because it actually gets a better view of the background and all the meters and stuff on the wall. Um, I mounted it to the fence here for the storage units and uh, so far it seems to work fine actually. I just put these bolts here. Um, but uh, I don't know if I can actually put 400 watt fixtures on that. But uh, this fixture we're reviewing today is actually a little bit heavy so it'll kind of um, do a good job at testing it out. And um, now the angle's different too, so we can see it from a different side. So it might kind of uh, remind you of another YouTuber that uh, does videos as well. To get started here, this is my 1960s Revere Unitized Urban Oval that is 250 watts mercury vapor. This fixture is super, super nice. Um, a buddy uh, got this for me down south. Um, I guess some of these were found down south and they were um, being taken out of service for LED. And I'm so glad he did because um, I just realized <laughs> um, a year ago or so um, how rare these things really are. Um, they're not common at all. Um, I don't know the town that he got these from, but these things are stupid freaking rare. But And they're also really, really cool. Um, the one thing I actually kind of like about this unitized urban oval is the way it's built. But um, yeah, just a little bit of a short history on this thing. I mean, I'm guessing this thing came out possibly in the late 50s, and it was made into the early 60s alongside some other fixtures. Um, Revere had introduced a new family of fixtures according to their little advertisement um, that they came out with. Um, Revere got out by, bought out by Kraus Heinz, and I don't know what happened from um, to these uh, streetlights from that point on word, and that was uh, in the 70s. So yeah, unfortunately that was a little lame, but uh, the fixture is not lame at all. If we um, come up here closely, you can see um, it's 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 an all cast body fixture, but if you look here, you got kind of like a pressed aluminum reflector uh, thing here going on, and it almost looks like a power pack fixture. I don't know if you'd consider this a power pack fixture as the um, this reflector here actually screws with these little uh, divots here that you can see on the sides. It actually screws into this top housing. But uh, I don't know why Revere didn't just come out with a real Cobra head and did this, but uh, um, I will say this has a lot of advantages um, compared to the more uh, modern Cobras that they came out with. But yeah, it's all cast. Very, very nice finish. Um, it's really awesome. And uh, like I said, you got little details like this for where the screws are. It's super, super nice. If we go on top here, you can see embossed on the top is Revere Electric, Chicago, USA. And it's nice, clear, and crisp in mold, and I really love that. Um, going back here, you got a little spot for adjustment for your arm. Um, this screw I haven't even messed with yet. I don't think it can do anything right now. But it's a nice stainless steel screw. Just got to be careful. Um, of course, if anyone gets these, do not uh, shear that off. And use some WD-40 because a lot of people don't use WD-40 and they break them. So yeah, really, really cool. Up here we have the photo cell socket. Um, one thing I like about Revere is um, if you can get the photo cell socket basis for these fixtures, if you have a non photo cell version, you can easily add one. So this is very interesting on um, how they got it. So this is a separately applied piece. The non photo cell versions would just be blank on top and it only would have this, just this little base section. But if you ever want to add one in the future, um, you could uh, cut out a hole with a hole saw bit and then you could just drill your two holes and you got two screws that actually screw in from the inside and you can see that right there screw up from the inside onto this um, separately applied piece to uh, hold it down and then of course on the top you got a photo cell uh, socket on there and it's really easy to adjust this photo cell socket all you got to do is these two screws here and then there's a little uh, spin plate just twist it back and forth to where you want it, um, your, well, to where you uh, want your north position to be. And then you screw it back down, it's nice and tight, and your photo cell socket can go back on. So yeah, and this is just a dummy photo cell, um, another one I have. 
that I'll be using in the video tonight. But yeah, uh, Revere did this. Um, they had a whole section in their uh, catalogs where you could just buy extra, you know, accessories, components, and just stuff to make your fixtures really customizable. And um, even though uh, I will say uh, Revere was kind of aiming, I feel like, towards the parking lot industry when it came to street lighting, um, they uh, did. This thing was uh, used on a, on a roadway, but that kind of just shows uh, why they uh, did this. Uh, Revere designed uh, at least their, your, at least most of their fixtures to be used in parking lots. So if anything needed to ever be modified or changed around, you could buy the extra accessories uh, necessary to uh, get the lighting set up you um, want for uh, whatever you're using it for. So yeah, pretty cool. But uh, I really, in terms of customization, uh, I don't know really how much you could do with this fixture other than just add a photo cell socket onto it. But yeah, let's go ahead and go onto the bottom section here. You can see there's like a uh, there's a panel. This is a pressed aluminum stamped panel. It's very straightforward and it's kind of weird in design. Um, it's kind of like the Westinghouse uh, OV25 uh, flat bottom fixture. Um, it's just kind of screwed in here, although this one's much nicer. Um, you, it's just kind of screwed down in there. You got a little uh, hinge here, if you can see. Um, and what you do basically is undo these two screws and then kind of fold this panel back and it'll uh, it'll kind of swing down. But uh, before we I show you guys that, let's look at one thing Revere also did. So they uh, engraved their name onto this panel and it says a patent applied for. I have no idea what that means, but uh, yeah, it says Revere on there. And wow, it's pretty cool. I've never seen that on a street light before um, until now, until I actually got one of these. So pretty awesome. And uh, yeah, that's uh, really all to see for this uh, outside part of the fixture. So let's go ahead and open up the street light and see the inside components. All right, so to undo the door, like I said, all you got are these two little screws right here. You basically just have to undo them just enough to where you can actually slide the panel backwards. And you can see there's these two really big openings. So, yeah, and you can slide this back. Um, it is designed to do that. But of course, with the age of this fixture, sometimes you just got to undo the screws a little bit more um, just because the door doesn't like to slide back all the way. Or you could just take the screws out completely. It doesn't really matter. But uh, once you have those out, it just swings down like that. So it's uh, very, very simple. And of course, like I uh, mentioned too, there's uh, two additional screws here as well. You got one here and one here. And you can actually take this off as well. See so if you just undo those. And I guess this is in case, you know, the door ever got really destroyed and you kind of just want to order a new one, but it's a little hard sometimes. Luckily, that was uh, pretty easy. But yeah, you can see the door is now off just by taking those two out completely. All right, here is the door. We can take a quick look at that. So yeah, like I said, it's just a stamped piece of aluminum. Of course, they got the really nice uh, engraved Revere logo on here. I really do like that. Um, but one thing that's kind of not the best thing, I guess, in the world is this maybe. Um, this hinge is a little rusted on here. You can see, um, with it being as thin as it is, it's, uh, well, mine's a little more loose now because I've messed with it. Um, but uh, yeah, you can uh, see it's kind of, kind of rusty and maybe a little bit junky. But uh, you can see, like I said, it's designed to slide. You got these uh, holes here so you can slide it accordingly. So pretty cool, but uh, I mean, I guess overall it's all right. Um, like uh, unlike uh, the OB25 uh, that did this, uh, this is a thicker piece of uh, aluminum. Um, the one for the OB25 is super thin and flimsy and cheap. So uh, this is actually better. Um, yeah, unfortunately, it uh, looks like there used to be a sticker here that would show us the specs of the fixture. But uh, that's gone, so we uh, can't see what that says. But no worries, because we are going to see the ballast inside here, and you guys actually are going to really like it. So let me go ahead and set this down, and we can get inside the fixture. All right, so starting in the back here, you can see the clamp that holds the street light onto the arm. It's a really nice big piece of stainless steel that is fabricated to fit. And you got these nice, uh, what I think are galvanized screws that hold it in as well. So those won't rust very quickly. 
But uh, yeah, pretty cool. And uh, one thing I did notice uh, when I first got this is the hole is actually fairly small. You really can only put a one inch arm on this. And I, for the sake of this video, it's fine. But uh, man, I hope Revere didn't uh, only have these made for that si style of arm because uh, man, these fixtures would not have sold well as um, people would probably want to put these on big mast arms because uh, some cities back then put their street lights on big mast arms. So yeah, uh, anyway, pretty nice though. Um, here is the screw terminal where all your connections um, meet. And yeah, it's pretty nice. It's just a black Bakelite um, terminal strip. It's uh, kind of like my Model 70 in a way as um, these are actually uh, pieced together to make a certain amount of screw uh, termination spots and uh, I don't know if Revere um, made it to where you can get them in like four, five, six or however many you wanted but uh, I do like these, they're pretty nice. Um, you will need a small screwdriver though because these screws are really tiny. But yeah, and uh, actually another thing too, I don't even think you could put really thick wire in there. Um, I know some utilities use thick wire. Uh, DTE here uses like, I don't know, like four aught, six aught wire. So uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't think that would fit under those, but anyway, and you got it uh, mounted to this really nice uh, piece of uh, stainless steel metal here. So yeah, moving forward, you can see the capacitor, it's really cool. Um, this is a 240 volt setup, I will say right now. But uh, since this is a little older, um, it still requires a capacitor to get the right, uh, right amount of voltage to come out because the transformer doesn't have the coils to um, give, get out, uh, get the complete voltage uh, to the lamp. So yeah, um, the only thing I don't like about this cap actually is the fact that the uh, terminal terminations are soldered on. But uh, as far as I'm seeing, uh, this capacitor is actually fine. Um, and I won't have to replace it anytime soon, but if I did, it'd be kind of a pain in the butt. Um, and the capacitor shape too is unique to the fixture, so yeah. But uh, it does seem to work fine, and since it's really only giving out a tiny bit of extra voltage for the lamp, it's m most likely not gonna fail as quickly as some others, so yeah. And you can see all the wiring here. It's really nice uh, rope-coated wire. It's all in really good shape, um, except for some of the ends here. You can see the the rope is kind of coating is kind of frayed off, but yeah. And moving up here under kind of under the socket reflector, you can see the transformer. It's a really nice Jefferson Electric ballast. It's a 240 volt ballast, and it's just super cool with that nice plate that it has on it. Um, it's just like my Model 70. Um, it's yeah, it's just really high quality. You don't ever see stuff like that on ballast, and I really like that. Now, I know there's a lot of people who would probably tell me, oh, you should replace the ballast. It's a 240 volt ballast, get a 120 volt ballast. But you know, I really disagree with people on that. And I am about keeping fixtures um, original as these things are really important and his historical. And uh, when you take the components out like that, it really destroys the actual true value because someday I'm gonna die and this might have to go to the museum and if they see the original components are not in here they may not want this fixture and it might go back in the trash so uh, yeah I recommend that everyone keeps their components original especially when it's a rare fixture like this that they uh, even if it's 240 volt please you know I recommend keeping it original because the value will go significantly down if you uh, get rid of the ballast so yeah but yeah, I do like this uh, ballast. It's really nice. Uh, Revere used uh, Jefferson ballasts in their fixtures, and I really like Jefferson ballasts. They're really high quality. They usually last a long time, um, and especially these old ones with these metal plates um, for the information. Just super, super freaking high quality. So I really love that. But uh, yeah, that's kind of it um, for the components. And you can see the socket here. It's a very straightforward socket. Um, you, I kind of like it actually because your wires actually screw and terminate onto the socket here. So it's easy to take apart and replace if you ever need it to. I mean, the socket is just made of porcelain. It's a very high quality and it's nice and long. And you got two screws holding it on to another stainless steel plate here, but there's no room for adjustment, unfortunately. Um, it is kind of static. It can't be moved at all. But uh, no, I don't really care about that very much. I prefer that all the lamps are in the center 
of the fixtures of reflectors anyway. And talking about the reflector, let's go ahead now and move on up into the front section here and we can take a look at that. All right, so this is pretty straightforward as well. All you gotta do is just pull this forward and it's kind of weird, it's a really flimsy piece of metal, but just pull that forward and it comes off that hook very easily. And just bring it back. And then you got that little hinge spot on the back, you just lift up and over and the refractor assembly is off. All right, with that off, we can take a look at the reflector assembly area in here. You can see it's uh, pretty much like every other street light, but it is mounted a little different. Um, this is a stamped or pressed aluminum reflector, whatever you want to call it. And it's uh, really nice. Um, unfortunately, some of the reflectants on it, the Alzac, has uh, come off. Um, so mine's not as shiny as it would have been if it was new, but uh, I'll get that uh, re-shined someday when I go to restore it. Here's the hinge. This is a stainless steel piece that is fabricated to work. And it's uh, riveted in there with three rivets. And man, is uh, this thing really nice. But uh, those rivets are actually kind of loose. They might need to be fixed. And uh, how is this mounted on here? Well, like I said, there's uh, screws that you could see. Um, little divots here for screws on the top. Oh, there it is. And uh, there's your screws here. So they're just uh, flathead screws just four that hold them in and uh man luckily these are in good shape because i just could see these getting really rusty and not wanting to come out um but all of them came out and i just kind of wiped them down as good as i could so yeah they uh they are so good and that's uh one of the last thing actually is uh where the clip on the ring for the re refractor uh clips on to it kind of just hangs on this it's just a that's a flat piece of stainless steel and there's one rivet holding that. Huh, so you got one rivet here and then you got three. Imagine just doing two there and then two there for this and then it just would be perfect. But uh, no, they didn't do that. <laughs> so yeah, and uh, that's it. Uh, there's nothing really else to see. Um, you can see the socket though coming in here. It's really cool and uh, well, even though I said there's no room for adjustment, it's not really 100% center, but you could always add an extension, I guess, if you wanted. Uh, one thing I do want to mention, actually, is the seal uh, for the sock, uh, socket coming in here. I don't know what this is made of, um, but it does uh, somewhere, I think it says Revere on it. It does have a number down there. Oh, it's on the top. You can't really see it. But this, uh, I don't know what this material is. It's a white seal. It feels more like a like a silicone type thing. It's not like the neoprene ones or the black uh, rubbery ones that were used in some of these fixtures. It's just a white material. I've never ever seen it before. I will say though, I really like it. It's super nice and um, oh, it's a little dry and I kind of just cracked it there, but uh, it doesn't really seem like it's prone to really falling apart too easily. It's super great. Um, whatever that is, uh, please let me know whatever that material is. It's super nice and I, I've just never seen it before. But yeah, other than that, that's really it. So uh, let's go ahead and look at the uh, refractor for this thing. All right, so here is the glassware. Um, and like I said, it's a little bit like a clamshell fixture in a sense that it has this metal ring. It's actually uh, more like an OV-12 if you really think about it, because the OV-12s are like that. But uh, I can't really get the ring off the glass very easily because as you can see, there's these, uh, I don't know what they call these, but I've seen these before. They got these special uh, types of clamps that kind of only are one timeies um, So uh, I guess uh, going to replace the refractor if you had to would be a little bit troublesome. Um, yeah, like I said, you got this uh, cast aluminum ring here. It's really well finished and really nice. If I flip it over here and see the hinge section, um, I think, uh, yeah, this piece right here, this piece is actually casted into this as well. If we go up here, oh, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of a spin there. You can see it says Revere. It's embossed really, really, really well on there. Awesome job. And then if we go around, I think there's another one. Oh yeah, there's just a little uh, number there. Don't know what that's for, but uh, yeah. And then going back up to the front here, you can see the, uh, the little uh, part that hooks onto the top housing. It's kind of strange. It's just a thin piece of stainless steel. It's screwed down. Um, I don't want to say this is low quality, but it's very, uh, it's a very simplistic, very, uh, I guess, low budget design, but it's uh, not bad. It's actually nice. Like, none of these are rusted really in here. And 
it's uh, super clean still, so I guess that's okay. And yeah, and that's uh, really it for that. But the glassware, um, I don't think there's really much to see. But there is some lettering on the uh, rim here we can take a look at. So you can see it says Revere. You got the model number, type 2. So this is a two-way refractor, so they must have made four-way versions. Hmm, interesting. And you can see it says House Side. It's made by Pyrex. What does that say? Code number, oh, made in the USA? Oh, okay. I was like, what is that saying? And you can see it's a street side. Um, I don't know if this is a perfect oval. I think it might be. If I want to flip the glass around, I think I could. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, uh, other than that, there's no logoing on it at all. It's a very plain uh, refractor but it's a very uh, nice refractor. It's clean, crisp, and clear in mold. Um, they do have some like surface texturing on it, but it's pretty consistent, so I don't think that is a low quality thing at all. I think it's just kind of how it looks. It's, uh, yeah, it's really unique. Um, this is, like I said, this is unique to this fixture. It's just a really nice piece of glass. I wish, though, because on the end ovals, they do have the logoing on it, and it's really pretty. There's no logoing on this one. So it's uh, a little boring for some reason. They didn't do that, but uh, yeah, I, I like this refractor. It's very, very nice, and uh, definitely gonna take good care of it. So yeah. Anyway, let's go ahead now and take a look at our lamp real quick, and I'll get this thing put back together, and we can watch it warm up. Alrighty, so let me go ahead and take the lamp out real quick, and I can show you guys what it looks like. You guys will actually like this one. So this is kind of a rare bird here. Um, this is a new old stock lamp I actually got off a marketplace that uh, came from a seller. Oh, you can actually see the arc tube through it. Pretty cool. Um, well, this is a Sylvania bulb, as you can see. It's a 250 watt bulb, and it's one of those rare ones um, because it's a clear bander, um, according to people who collect lamps. So yeah, pretty cool. It's like I said, it's new old stock. Um, I have ran it a couple times now, but. As you can see, uh, with some of the light in the background, you can see the R2 is still nice and clean. So it's going to look really beautiful and bright when I turn it on. But um, yeah, that's what I'm uh, going to assign to this fixture. I was going to assign a clear ball, but I uh, just kind of decided to give this one this one. Or <laughs> this ball, I mean, um, because uh, I just thought it was kind of cool. So it really uh, fits the... Uh, the transitional feel of this fixture. So yeah. Anyway, um, now that that's there, back in there, yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the lights off now, so we can get started. Now, turn this one off. All right. So this is my 1960s Revere Unitized Urban Oval. That is 250 watts mercury vapor in one, two. Three. Oof. The outlet flickered a little bit when I uh, turned it on there. But yeah. See, it's, uh, you can kind of hear it. it's kind of quiet. Pretty nice. So yeah. Let's go ahead and uh, watch it warm up. We are at full brightness. Man, is this thing really nice and quiet <laughs> for it being old. But uh, this fixture, like I said, it came from down south, so it's uh, it's uh, in really good shape. But yeah, you can see it. Really, really nice looking. You can see the reflector area, the glass. Wow. I really love how uh, well molded this refractor is. It's so clear. You can see the bulb and even like... You can even like see the socket in there. It's just so nice, and you can uh, oh, you actually can even see the clear band band on the bulb. It's just whew. good job, Revere. I really wish you had stuck around a little longer, 
Uh, no, no, yeah. If you stuck around longer, though, you probably would have gotten cheap on stuff. But uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah. You can see it's really nice looking. Kind of do one of those shots. Oh, well, gosh dang, it's just bright. See the door. Then the top section, I'll go all the way around just for the sake of the video. Gosh darn camera, you cannot focus tonight. There we go. Go on to the top here, you can see the photo cell again. And the wonderful lettering that's on here, I really like that. Yeah, kind of do this. Whew. Yeah, you can see the clear band on that. That's super duper cool. And then uh, we got the latch on the front here as well. Awesome, I love that. And uh, yeah, that's... One thing I can do too is uh, just for a little bit of fun. Go ahead and open this up. Let's take a look at our lamp. Special clear bander. Wow. You can see the arc tube through it. I can't look at it. The camera can. I think that's actually why the focus is going bad on the camera. Because <laughs> it looks at so many of my street lights. Yeah, really awesome. And it's warm in there. Go ahead and close that back up and we can finish up here. There we go. My lens is dirty, that's why. Yeah. That was my Revere Unitized Urban Oval from the 1960s in 250 watts mercury vapor. I'm really glad I was able to share this picture with you guys tonight. It was really, really fun to look at. And uh, yeah, I'm definitely gonna keep this in my collection forever because this thing is definitely, definitely a high quality fixture. Um, of course, uh, um, I thank you guys for watching, and uh, if you're new, please like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Um, I am almost to, uh, I want to thank everyone, because I'm almost to 800 subscribers, and my goal here is to hit 1,000 subscribers. So if there's anyone new here and you really do want to see more stuff like this, please, I ask you from all my heart to subscribe, because I would like to achieve that milestone someday. Um, but uh, yeah, and... Uh, if you guys know or um, anything about this fixture that I haven't mentioned, you know, feel free to let me know down in the comments below. And of course, if anyone knows where any more of these are still in service, I encourage everyone to share locations, take photos, so that people can, uh, you know, hopefully go and uh, try to figure out how these can be saved. Of course, since uh, LED is pretty much um, cr destroying these things at this point in time. So yeah. Um, feel free to uh, do that as it would really help this hobby out and uh, anyway, that's all I got for you guys um, Thank you for watching and happy streetlight collecting, but goodbye